you today? I'm 32 now. 32. Yeah. What happened to you after that, um, the, the movie and that creation of the, the, the windmill? Um, I mean, after the creation of the windmill, I've had a chance to uh, travel around the world. But when I was uh, building the windmill, I little didn't imagine that one day I'll have this chance to travel around the world having like this type of uh, this interview like today. Um, I had no, um, I had no idea that will happen. But I think I'm just happy that that has happened. That I've managed also to inspire other people around the world. I uh, hear a lot of like stories that after watching your movie, um, I got like so inspired by you. I'm like people say like after reading your book, I was so encouraged. I was able to go back to school. And now I'm getting my degree. I'll be graduating in like two months. Sometimes I, how I graduated because of you, you inspired me. So, to me, it's very. Um, I'm very happy to what happened. I graduated in 2014 mm -hmm. uh, with environmental studies uh, degree at Dartmouth College uh, in in New Hampshire. So, I graduated on that. So, did you move from from your country to US? How how? So I moved to the U.S. for school and I'm still like living in, like, in the U.S. now, but it's, I spread my time. Half of the year I'm in the U.S., half of the year I'm in Malawi, uh, because we're still doing a lot of projects in Malawi. And the, one of the projects that we are working on now, we want to build up innovation center that is going to allow young people who have an idea to come and work with me to design and build a project that will direct the, uh, solve or address the issues that they are facing in their own community. So you were, when you you built the, the windmill, you were 14, right? I was 14, yeah. And you had a dream. You had a great problem and you had a dream. How was it? Tell mm. me. So at that time, we had like the problem that we are facing. So I thought that it was wise for me to find a solution to address it. So they, um, the windmill was one of the solutions that I would come that I came up with to solve that problem. I think the motivation was for me was trying to come up with the, um, a solution. I know that the challenge that we are facing at that time needed needed a solution. Uh, so the solution that I would come up was to build the windmill because I saw the picture of the windmill in the book. I told myself if this windmill exist somewhere else in the world. It means a human being like me was able to build it. At that time, even though I couldn't understand English that well, but I think using diagrams and pictures, I was able like, to be able like, to understand about like, some of the physics of how electricity can be generated. That's how I was able to, uh, to come up with that idea of building the windmill. More than uh, to build the windmill, you built a new uh, mindset in your uh, village, right? Because people didn't uh, believe that it would happen, right? They, they started hoping it as well. How yeah. was it? Yeah, it's like uh, nowadays I think the mindset of a lot of young people have changed because before I built the windmill, people only like believed that the science and technology can only be done by the people in the West. but he, uh, Malawians, they can't do anything in terms of like science. But now that mindset has changed because people say, look, if William was able to do that, there's nothing that he can stop us also from achieving uh, many things in terms of like science. So they're also like little like encouraged that they can be able like to innovate, being able to come up with a solution that will direct, direct to solve some of the issues that they are facing. So. And uh, for you now, uh, what's the importance, in your opinion, of the technology? It can take uh, the, the poor countries out of the poverty. How, how do you believe? Uh, what's the importance of the technology? I believe like, technology is very, uh, it's very important when uh, addressing a lot of like, uh, challenges in many countries. It just like, it depends on the, the technology. The technology that he, people in the U.S. might need, might be different from the technology that people uh, in Malawi, for example, might need. It might be like in different like, location. There's the appropriate technology that can be applied in a community in Malawi. There's also like a technology that can be applied 
in the, any like community here in Brazil. So you have to figure out what type of technology we're talking about because some of the technology, it might be great technology, but if it doesn't deal, uh, directly address like issues that people are facing in that particular settings, then that great technology, it will stop being great. It will be just uh, one of the worst kind of like uh, technology. So I, th I believe that technology, it's one of the way to uh, solve and address issues that uh, people uh, are facing or to develop different like, communities. That's why everything starts from a problem, right? Mm -hmm. So if you know your problem, you know your challenge, you, you have to build uh, a proper technology for you. Yeah, say like, uh, yeah, you need like to do that. You need like to find out what's the problem and what type of technology can we be able to apply to this challenge in order to solve this uh, problem. So I think you always have to start on that, start, start there. Great. And what happened? Your family still lives in Malawi. Is they are there, and that vegetation, that the culture that you have, is still exists. What yeah, happened? Yeah, my my family. They still like uh, lives there in Malawi. Uh, they are still doing. Uh, some still doing like the farming, growing crops. Mostly are growing. Um, maize and also soya beans and the sweet potato that are some of the crops that they are growing so they're still like in the same area uh, where I grew up. What about your sisters? Are they there? My sisters, some of who, uh, they are still in Malawi but they have, uh, some of them they have moved in some other areas because the, uh, where they are living with their, uh, their families also so they have like moved around. So just to understand, from that time uh, when you were 14, you built the, the windmill, and then who discovered you? How was it? Uh, it was like a newspaper news, uh, the, the windmill, and then you got uh, to, to travel around the world telling your story. How was it? Uh, so when I first like, made the windmill, I didn't stop going to the library. and. The, the organization that started the library, they brought a journalist to my, uh, to my, to my village. They wrote about my story, and that story was picked up by one of the guys who was organizing the TED conference. That's how I got a, a chance to get invited to attend TED conference, which was held in Malaysia, at Tanzania. Good to see you. Thanks. <laughs> so, um, we, we've got a picture, I think. Where is this? This is my home. I, this is where I live. Okay, yeah. and that was the starting point again? That was the starting point. We, we made the starting, no, point. Yeah, the starting we, point is the, the windmill, the, the, of yeah, course. So, yeah. <laughs> but so the, that's another the, turning point, maybe. Turning point, yeah. 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 So that wasn't like a starting point, but I think that was the more of like a turning point to get the, the story known around the world. Okay, yeah. and you get some support, uh, financial support at that time? At that time, when I went to the conference, I got like a lot of people who wanted to uh, support the, the idea. So we started the NGO called the Moving Women's Project to do a lot of work in Malawi, and also people were able, like, interested to help me to go back to school. So that's why I was able to go back to school. And the, uh, I first went to school in, in Malawi for a year, and then I went to school in South Africa for two years. After there, that's when I went to Dartmouth College, uh, where I graduated in 20, 2014. Great. Yeah. And what do you want now, from now? Uh, from now, my main focus right now is the innovation center that we are building, because the, we want to make sure that I can give opportunity to so many talented young people who have an idea, but maybe they're not, they, they don't have uh, tools or space or mentorship program that it would help them to achieve what they want to, uh, to achieve. I think for me, when I was building the windmill, I wish if I could have had mentorship or space or tools to use on my work, but I didn't have that. So I want to make sure that I have, we have that platform to allow those young people to be able to, uh, to achieve their goals. You didn't have any support, right? actually, uh, as we see in the movie. Just a yeah. friend of yours? Just like friends who helped me, my friend and my cousin, they are the ones that were able like, to believe me.
you faced like resistance in, still with your parents, right? They didn't believe at the, in the beginning. Yeah, they didn't because the, um, we don't have the word for windmill in my language and I was telling them that I'm building this uh, windmill, then they were like, um, I was building it using the junk that I could find at the junkyard at the same time telling them I'm building the machine that they have never seen, they don't know about it. It was a little bit like a spectacle on them being like, uh, we don't know about like this. And it was the only bike you have, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you and congratulations for your story. It's really inspiring. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Nice meeting you too. <laughs> Thank you.